The Argon One is a really interesting speaker system because Anthium are going about things quite differently to achieve a very familiar goal. But are they better than the KEF LS50 Meta, the Bukar S300 Mark II SE, and the ATC SCM11? Let's find out. If you're new here, I am doing a stand mount speaker group mega test. And by mega, I mean this many speakers and more are all being reviewed and compared to each other to try and help you find the right speaker for you and to crown the best stand mount speaker in 2021, costing under £1,300. And if that sounds of interest to you, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. The Amphium Argon One are the fourth speakers that I have reviewed in this group mega test so far. So that means I'll be comparing them in this review to the KEF LS50 Meta, the Bukart S300 Mark II SE and the ATC SCM11 speakers. That is some crazy stiff competition for the Argon One, but they more than hold their own. In fact, I think they sit very nicely in between the KEF LS50 Meta and the ATC SCM11 in terms of their performance, but with a little bit of their Scandinavian cousins, the Bukarts sound too. But it's how they achieve that performance, which I think is really interesting. Price-wise, they cost £1,200 or £600 each, which makes them about £100 cheaper than the ATC SCM11 and about £200, give or take, more expensive than the KEF LS50 Meta and Bukart S300. And if you are new to Amphium, they are a speaker manufacturer based in Finland, and they have been established since 1998, so around 23 years. And they make speakers for home hi-fi and studios. The Argon One are available in black, white, white and black, black and white, and wood. And then a little bit like the LS50 Meta, you can choose from a variety of colors, but for the grills only. And interestingly, I think their styling shares more in common with the Bukart S300. The Argon One are a two-way rear ported speaker with really quite modest dimensions. They are one of the smaller speakers in the group test, and yet they have a claimed base frequency response of down to 45 hertz. Although that is a measurement at minus six decibels, but it definitely gives you some idea of their tuning. I think more interesting is not the five and a quarter inch aluminium mid bass driver, it's the one inch titanium tweeter that sits inside what is now, I think, an A stereotypical looking waveguide. And it really sits inside it. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see from the video, but you have what seems like an outer waveguide, then you have a grill, and the tweeter sits further back still. And I assume this is all to do with time alignment, a little bit like the speakers that we see that have that Michael Jackson famous lean about them. And we are seeing this type of waveguide included in quite a few different speakers these days, which almost makes us take it for granted. But you know what, in the flesh, when you actually you know, look at it, look at it closely, it is something that we should really appreciate because it's a very lovely thing. And we'll see just how well it works in a minute. The crossover to the tweeter is where things are interesting because it's at 1.6 kilohertz, which is a very low crossover point compared to say the 2.8 kilohertz crossover that we will see in a lot of two-way speakers. And this is definitely a standout thing with the Amphium Argon Ones and something I definitely want to look at in more detail. And setup of the Argon One was easy. They are not fussy at all, except I did have to pay attention to towing. Now I started the review listening one day, actually quite early in the morning. So I was listening to the Argon Ones at a much lower volume than I normally would. And you know what? They are actually good speakers at low volumes if that's something that's important to you. And I set the towing up again at this lower listening volume. But later in the morning, as I turned the volume up a lot more, I did notice that the way I had the speakers towed in, the treble was a little bit too present for me. So I had to tow the speakers out just some to find a better overall balance of sound. And this was very similar to how, what I had to do with the KEF LS50 Metas, but I do think that the presence of the treble was definitely more apparent 
with the Argon One. But my initial listening impressions of them were actually very strong. They are very fast sounding speakers, even in the bass, and you can definitely sense you know, a studio monitor type vibe to their sound. Then I did some measurements as part of a Dirac Live calibration, and the results are really interesting, especially when we compare them. And you can see the Argon One is pretty ruler flat from 500 hertz to 10 kilohertz. And you can clearly see what Amphium are doing here, and really, I suppose, what they are prioritizing. But it's a little bit of an illusion, as there is a little bit of a dip through the crossover, but really it's minimal. And if we compare the response to the LS50 Meta, well, you can see some differences and you can see that the Meta have much more of a dip. Comparing the Argon One to the ATC SCM11, well, the ATC probably measures a little more true through their crossover. But you know what, both measure great. But if you look at 300 hertz to one kilohertz, there is a noticeable difference with the ATC having a little rise and the Argon One, they don't have that. I think this is one of those seemingly small differences that probably relates into you know, quite an obvious difference in terms of sound quality between these two speakers. While we're talking about similarities, one of the speakers that are famous for using a one inch titanium tweeter with a crossover in a similar region is the now YouTube infamous Klipsch RP600M that I reviewed as part of my last stand mount speaker group test. This is how the Klipsch measure with that now, you know, famous big dip in the frequency response. And some people will say, you know, why would you spend more money on speakers? Well, this could be one indicator of why you might want to spend more. And I think it's interesting that the Argon Ones reminded me just a little bit of the Klipsch RP600M in terms of the way they presented the mid-range, the speed of the speaker, and a little bit in the treble maybe. The Argon Ones are definitely much more composed sounding than the Klipsch. But it makes me think that if you like the Klipsch sound, the RP600M sound, but you're looking for a speaker that is more accurate sounding, well then maybe the Amphium range would be one to consider. At the base end of things, the Argon One have a very similar base output in my room to the Kef LS50 Meta. In fact, the measurements make them look almost identical, which means, yes, they will have more base output than the SCM11. But the Bukar S300 is still clearly the king here if you're looking for more base output and more base extension. For overall sound quality, as I mentioned, the Argon One are fast sounding speakers from top to bottom. They sound clear and crisp, and they combine a mixture of the ATC SCM11's ability to communicate the musical information to you in a studio monitor speaker style, but a little bit more relaxed than the ATC. I think probably due to that kind of more bass output. And they definitely sound crisper overall, a little bit more like how the LS50 Meta sound. And I think this is all to do with the tweeter and the fact that it drops down to 1.6 kilohertz, dropping down into that upper vocal region of the frequency range. And that means that the Argon Ones, they do have this kind of crisper sounding vocals that really cuts through the soundstage. And I think cuts through better than the LS50 Meta and the Bucarts. But it's interesting, the comparison with the ATC SCM11, because the vocals from the ATC really cut through the soundstage as well. And when we looked at the measurements, we spoke about that little rise, didn't we, at what, around one kilohertz, which I think is maybe an indicator of just why and how the ATC cut through. And interestingly, we don't have that rise with the Argon One, but we still have a vocal that cuts through the soundstage. So I think both of these companies are trying to achieve the same goal, going about it differently. Because we have to think, you know, for six inch doped driver, which is much bigger and much heavier, then say a tweeter is trying to produce that same part of the vocal region, well, they're, obviously they're going to do it differently 
Both of them have a, have a way of cutting through the soundstage. Really, really, really interesting difference. The treble from the Argon one is also interesting because it's clean and again, fast, very precise. It's very easy to pick out treble details in music. I don't think the treble is quite as special as the ATC SCM11. It's also quite a difficult treble to fault, taking into account what I said about towing. And if I had to summarize the treble from the Argon ones, I would just say it's very honest, if that means anything to anybody. And sound staging is very impressive from the Argon one. The sound is very even across the sound stage. No surprise, obviously looking at the measurements. And you can hear this evenness about how they sound before a direct live calibration, but it's obviously more clear to hear it after. And they present a sound that is very clear in terms of an overall sound stage, but there is a little bit, and I do mean a little bit of reservation about how they sound, just a little bit more easy going, say a little bit like the Bucar S300, not as much as that, but a little bit. And that means that they are definitely less forward sounding than the ATC SCM11. In fact, they probably sit somewhere in between the tube, in between the ATC and the boo cart for this presentation. A little bit more relaxed, as I mentioned, which actually, you know what, is quite a nice place to be. Bass was one of the big surprises for me with the Argon One because I was expecting them to be bass light given their size, but they are not. They are impressive for bass for their size. And I feel like their bass is a mixture of the Kef LS50 Meta and the Bucar S300. They measured very similar to the LS50 Meta, but I think Amphium have you know, chosen to tune the Argon one with a little bit more extension in mind. So that means they don't sound quite as tight and as punchy as the LS50 Meta, but it means they are a little bit more smoother and a little bit more you know, extended in their bass sounding a little bit more like the Bucar S300. And you know what, I think that is really, really important for their overall sound delivery because they, that extra bass, that extra bass fullness and warmth really helps to balance that livelier sounding upper mid range and treble. And I think overall that creates, you know, a very balanced overall sounding speaker system that just a little bit of extra warmth really makes the difference. So overall, the Argon One is up there in terms of sound quality with these other three excellent speakers. And there are some obvious similarities between them, but there are a lot of obvious differences as well. And you know, clearly the differences are going to be how one person might choose one of these speaker systems over the other. And I think, it's that use of the tweeter and the whole tweeter design, which may be the reason why some audiophiles may prefer the other speakers to the Argon One. But I think interestingly, the way the Argon One sound, that clear, fast, precise sound could be the reason why you know, audiophiles prefer them over the other speakers. And when I looked at the Amphion website, it seems like they use that exact same tweeter design principle across all of their speakers, including their studio speakers and their Krypton 3 flagship speakers, which means I think this character about them is definitely going to be an Amphium house sound thing. But I am definitely not making any conclusions yet because there are still lots of other really interesting speakers to review as part of this group test. And up next is up to you. Let me know down below in the comments section which of the speakers that are left for the group test you'd like to see reviewed next. I hope you've enjoyed this video, I hope you found it useful and helpful. Smash that like button if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon. Take care, bye.